Thank you. No, again, uh, thank you, Joao, for the invitation, and and I am very happy to be here with you, all of you, uh, sharing this. Uh, well, it's, it's 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 just to share experience with you and um, and some ideas about feeding working equids in not in the world because I don't know the world. <laughs> I have thank. Thanks to my work with the Donkey Sanctuary and World Health Welfare for some years, I have been to some parts of the world in Central America, and, and I have been to Ethiopia, to India, to Spain, well, no, yeah, Spain and Portugal and England, uh, and some other areas where I have had the opportunity to see the the different um, environments where there are equids and where there are different type of working equids then um, and i have also been uh, i have also had the opportunity to pay attention of the resources the type of equids the type of work they do there and well uh, to to well to to have ideas in in my mind about how to 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 feed them uh, my main experience obviously is in mexico um, where I have lived my entire life and where I have been in contact with equids since I am, am a, I am a child. Uh, and, and well, when I had this great opportunity to, to join the, the program between the Donkey Sanctuary and, and by then the International League of the Protection of Horses, my, my um, duty was to, to, to work on the nutrition project, nutrition and management project for working equids. And the good, well, the interesting thing of Mexico, probably there are many countries with conditions like this, but in Mexico you have um, um, landscapes very similar to some landscapes and, and ecosystems like in England, like in Ethiopia, like in India, uh, I mean, uh, like in Central America, the very tropical environments, then, then you have this type of weather conditions, this type of uh, uh, resources you have to, to, to feed the animals and also the practices, the animal welfare practices that people uh, carry uh, out to, to keep their animals and you, you have lots to learn from them. Uh, Joao, any, any problem with the sound? Just let, let me know please because sometimes uh, this, this this uh, internet connection fails. It's working perfectly, Mariano. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Then, um, well, the, the aim of this talk is to, to not to not to present scientific uh, information. Obviously, presenting information based on scientific uh, knowledge, and but also to share with you some of the experiences I have had. Uh, some some of the empirical knowledge I have got from people and what confirms I would say this I would like to say this in this way some some experiences with people that confirm the scientific knowledge or the research yeah when it is obviously the opposite the research confirms many of our empirical uh, knowledge uh, or, or the, many of the empirical knowledge we we, we have or, uh, then, um, well, let's to start. I, I have the the idea. Well, I, I always like to say, well, this this is a video that it, it should work, but um, um, it's not. Well, the main advantage that human being has obtained from the domestication of equids it's a movement to obtain. The power of, of the it's it's working out. It's it's an interesting video because it's you will see a donkey, a mule, and a horse uh, pulling a, a machine to 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 see the. Uh, but this is this is being valued. Okay, okay. It seems now it, it it's okay. Then this is in the land in the high mountains of Mexico, where where the landscape is what we call semi-desertic. And look at this long way these animals have to walk with 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 the with the man.
to work is land, then it's uh, some of the work in the land is done with tractors used to, to for example, the first uh, plowing they do, but they normally like to use animals to, to, to see, for example. Then we see here a horse, a mule, and a donkey. And this type, these three types of equids uh, provide the, the power to these people. Here we go again with now with a photo. And the well, two aspects are necessary to, to, to understand or to keep in mind when, when, when working with nutrition of equids, or in this case, equids, yes, because it's, it's a bioenergetics, how they transform the nutrients to energy, because energy is the main, uh, the main thing, the main, we will not say uh, nutrient, because the, the energy is not a nutrient. Nutrients uh, uh, provide or are metabolized to produce energy. Then uh, and energy is the main thing the, the horses or the equids need to perform. And we, we need to understand the bioenergetics and we need to understand also the biomechanics, especially in what has to do with how the animals are, are made, are designed by nature, and how the human is using or taking advantage of this, of this design of the animal to do work and to obtain power, uh, power in terms of work, not in terms of uh, politics. <laughs> And sometimes and for a while animals were important for this, equids were important for this. But, uh, and obviously there is a nervous system which uh, facilitates the connection with the environment and effective with communication with humans. And why, why I am uh, so, uh, um, I, I normally insist a lot in, in the behavior and the design of the animals because this is an, an image from Mexico of a family going to the field. And then you see the, the man taking the donkey uh, and, and, and the other, and this donkey is taking the other donkey who is taking the lady and the, and the girl uh, on their back in this, in this way to ride, uh, in, in this way the women ride in, in Mexico normally, uh, which is the two legs to one side. And I say that uh, there, need, there needs to be a, a very, uh, very special nervous system to, to, well, to see this type of, of images, no? That this donkey walks very quiet with the family on their back, on his or her back. I don't, I can't see if it is a male or a female. But uh, also having to do with the, with the biomechanics, and this also shows the importance of, of this uh, nervous system, how it, having to do with the biomechanics, the, how the animal is designed and, and how the animal uh, moves and then works in certain type of, of environments. But also uh, talking about the bio um, uh, energetics, how the animal uses uh, the, the nutrients and uses the, the oxygen to, to produce the energy uh, necessary to move and most important in working animals to endure uh, because there are times of the year when animals are not working. For example, these, these, these donkeys are from an, an other area of Mexico, the Mixteca, uh, uh, and then in, this type, in these places, People have donkeys because they they have no no, no resources, no money to, to have a, a tractors, for example, and and also if they had it, if they had tractors, the land is very uh, how would you say full of of stones, no? Is is uh, and then is the, the land can be worked just with animals, very difficult with tractors, and then. But they have donkeys because now we see it's green, but it, that's summer, but during winter and autumn is and the beginning of the spring is just dry, almost desertic, well, semi-desertic. But they have the donkeys because they, the donkeys uh, do well 
in this in this type of environments or ecosystems why because they are used four times a year uh, during two weeks that means eight weeks in total a year uh, they are brought home uh, the, the donkeys are brought home then to 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 work the land uh, during a couple of weeks just to prepare the land in the first season the second season to seed the third season for the second uh, seeding and, and the fourth season to harvest then and the rest of the year the donkeys are free ranched uh, and they find the food they need to 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 keep uh, well just yes, to sustain their requirements then um, probably in this land horses wouldn't work i don't know i can't say that they, I can confirm this because the only I have seen in this land for working purposes are donkeys and they, and they do well with, uh, with the environment and also with the resources, both the resources, the natural resources they can eat and the, the very few uh, resources that people have from harvesting some, some, uh, yeah, some, some forages. Um, if if you want to know how big is the extension of land these people have, it's less than a hectare to produce maize and to produce maize for their uh, yes for for them, the grain for them and the forage from from the uh, from harvesting the, the the maize for for the donkeys while the donkeys are at home uh, or for some other animals but uh, like goats when the goats have to stay at home but most of the year the goats are uh, well uh, outside with with a shepherd then um, sorry for uh, having stopped a lot in this in this slide but i think it's the main thing uh, because it's the way in which uh, it matches very interestingly the the design of the animal which is the biomechanics with with the uh, uh, cap ability to produce energy from the resources the animal receives or the animal can and and this is the the, the, the most important thing how we put together biomechanics and, and, and bioenergetics when we are uh, uh, talking about any equid or any animal but especially in working equids because working equids are seen more when we think about working equids we think about these these animals in these conditions but there are also very big working equids we will see in a minute in europe and and uh, that uh, that are also working equids and, and they are in other ecosystems and they have different design they, they their biomechanics is different their bioenergetics could be similar but uh, but the nutrients they are obtaining to produce energy are different and, and, and then that's the type of things we are going to discuss and how to extrapolate and how to move from one animal to another and from one uh, ecosystem to another, etc. Uh, and first, I, I just tell you an, an experience in another area of Mexico, in a very tropical area, uh, where there are Creole horses. Creole horses in Mexico are those who who come from from well, yeah. Uh, are, are those descendants from those horses the uh, Spanish conquerors broke to Mexico some hundred of years ago? Uh, then those Creole horses are 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 like those Iberian uh, native uh, horses, yes, which are more like uh, ponies. <laughs> I, I I don't like to use the word pony, but uh, because for me they are horses, but since they are uh, shorter than 1.45 meters, they are called ponies in many areas or in many ways. And well, in those areas, those horses were perfectly adapted for working purposes. And then governments suddenly decided uh, to bring some quarter horses to be uh, uh, bred with, with the local mares and to obtain bigger horses, stronger horses, and uh, more, we would say, productive horses, what they thought. Um, we were not asked for an opinion, and 
and well, the, we could see uh, uh, an interesting um, effect of bringing this type of horses because now uh, these horses were not well adapted to heat conditions because they were bigger and they were more, they ate more and they were more difficult to, to maintain. The shoes now were, the shoemaker now was producing smaller shoe, uh, smaller shoes for those horses, but it is not like that. It seemed simply horses were bigger uh, than the, the, the shoes available in the area, then more problems started to, to appear. Then this is how I match these this two things, the, the, the design of the animal and how that design matches with the ecosystem and how that ecosystem let the animal obtain Let's the animal obtain the nutrients to to be uh, to to meet its requirements, and, and then in this way we just apply the sciences, the science and the data and the and the information as we are going to, to see now. Uh, but and, and we understand why in many cases we we see some problems. But any question? Uh, I don't know how the the dynamics of this is, Joao. But if there is any question, because mainly because I am not an English speaking uh, natural, how do you say, person, and something couldn't be well understood or a word couldn't be understood, then just let me know. And, and I, 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 I say again. Then I- I, I just uh, put it on, on the chat, Marian. If someone has a question, they can write it on chat. And if there's anything urgent or something like that, I'll let you know, okay? Yes, but I, I'm not very good with the chat while I am talking. Uh, I'll keep, an eye just, on, I'll keep an eye on the chat, don't yeah, worry. And, and, you, and you just interrupt me okay. and tell, hey, this is not clear, please. Uh, well, I, I always like to start by saying how horses keep themselves in, in an environment, in an ecosystem. It's very easy because the sun uh, provides the, the, the light, then the plants uh, transform that light in, in carbohydrates and then the plants grow and then there is there is, there is uh, uh, biomass to be eaten by the horse and the horse eats that biomass and and, and, and well that biomass is transformed inside uh, to energy to uh, well the, the amino acids acids are extracted the fat is extracted etc etc the fiber is fermented and the volatile fatty acids are available to, to, to sustain the energy requirements, etc. It's very easy. It's very easy in nature. And then the horse, horse give, gives back to the environment some uh, carbon dioxide and, and, um, and water. Yeah. And then uh, the system, the ecosystem of this horse and this horse uh, live happy together. The thing is when the horse is working, yeah, the horse is not eating. When the horse is moving, and, and, and in natural conditions, this horse moves and runs to to be uh, well to to keep alive, you no, know, to to be far away from the predators. And in this case, the horse is using the the the, the, the reserves in in his body. And I am talking about the horse because most of the science to understand this has been produced in horses and sport horses, and we are kind of extrapolating to working animals. Some work has been done in working equids, and, and we now understand, and in donkeys, more recently in donkeys. When I started, there was no information about donkeys. We have to, to, to make lots of, of um, um, suppositions, or we have had to assume some other things when working when, when, yeah, when feeding donkeys. Now the information is more available with the donkeys and we will talk about this, but um, then the horse, uh, when the horse is moving, is using what the, the, the what is um, storage in, in, the, in, the, in the body, yeah? Obviously it is using oxygen too and it is producing carbon dioxide, but, a very important thing when, when working with bioenergetics of equids is how they, 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 they uh, use the nutrients to produce energy and the quantity of heat 
I, I forgot to, to translate calor, calor is heat, sorry, and, and how much heat is being produced while, while doing exercise. A horse working or doing exercises can produce up to 50 times the heat it normally produces while being just eating or quiet. Yeah, and this heat has to be dissipated and is dissipated as sweat and sweat is water and water is also uh, and sweat is also minerals and protein and, and and if the horse is not able to dissipate the heat or uh, the equid is not able to dissipate the heat then more energy is used uh, to, for that to thermoregulate then it's it's an interesting thing when i talk with my friends my clinician friends uh, it's interesting how they how they say, oh, yeah, now I understand. And you say, well, many problems, musculoskeletal problems, digestive, gastrointestinal problems, respiratory problems can come just by ignoring or by forgetting that the horse uh, loses lots of water uh, as, as sweat, and that sweat has lots of minerals and protein. We will see uh, uh, later on. Uh, the importance of this when when working with the nutrition of these animals and the donkey although the donkey uh, for example one of the things uh, the professor who started the donkey sanctuary program in mexico almost 40 years ago dr aline Schunemann, uh, uh, she she did a, a very interesting work on on um, uh, 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 sweating glands in the skin of donkeys and she found that the donkeys had has less uh, sweating glands in the in the skin than the donkeys who of you have seen a donkey covered of sweat very seldom we can see a donkey like that but a donkey like that a donkey with uh, producing lots of sweat is because the heat increment is being so important and and we were we we have known and we have we have known about donkeys because i have never seen a donkey dying because of heat stroke but we have known in some communities about donkeys dying because of heat stroke um, and then uh, well this is very important when when providing or when feeding equids because many um, feed stops are oh, oh, well yes contribute to the heat increment in the animals and then when there is lots of heat there is a reduction in the in the performance of the animal and the first uh, an equid does when there is a heat that cannot be a heat increment that is not being properly controlled or properly well the, the, the heat is not being properly eliminated then there is a reduction in its performance. And I will tell you uh, an, uh, an anecdote in, in this, uh, regarding this. Then, um, heat is, as I say, very important. This horse is not uh, a chestnut horse. Actually, it's a sorrel horse like this, like its mane, uh -huh. but it's covered with sweat. Uh -huh. And it's, it's about getting a heat stroke because the owner was just kept working it uh, uh, in, a, in a very uh, humid and, and hot day. Uh -huh. And just to, to remember, uh, because we are now entering to the nutrition of the equids, to the feeding of the equids, it's that they are herbivores, they eat just plants. Uh, and, and why I say this, because in many areas, people is looking for resources to, to, to keep the animals well fed. Uh, and using uh, things that are not uh, uh, plants. But this is a horse in a, in a, in somewhere in the tropics of Mexico, which is in a very good condition, and it's just from grazing. Uh -huh. They are grazers, why? Because they, they, they choose things that are easy to chew. Uh -huh. they, they, during the evolution, the equids decided to chew more than um, th there is a very interesting article or paper about how they they, uh, they studied 
23 species of herbivores, and they showed how some species of herbivores uh, decided, we will say, well, it's what, it, it is like a trade-off. They decided to, to retain more the digesta, or they decided to, to have a slower rate of passage, but some others decided to chew more effectively. Then the whole the equid decided to chew more effectively, and by chewing more effectively, they, they had uh, uh, shorter retention times. They needed to rely less on the, on the retention of the digesta. However, to, to chew more effectively, they had to select uh, materials easier to be chewed. Uh -huh. It's very interesting this because later on we are talking about the budget time for equids to eat. And in that budget time, we have to take into account how long does it take for an equid to eat a kilo of forage? Yes, if we decide to, to, to provide 10 kilos of forage, then well, not if we decide, if we, if we get the calculation that 10 kilos of forage have, have to be provided, we have to allow at least 10 hours for, for, for those 10 kilos of forage to be eaten uh -huh, because of the chewing. You, we will see some data later on. Then you always keep in mind they are herbivores, which is like obvious, and it, it, I, I can be, uh, I can be sounding a little bit silly, <laughs> but they are grazers because they, they find, or they, they select things to be easy to chew. They are foragers because they select more than one thing to eat when they are uh, uh, free ranched. Uh -huh. There are studies showing that they, they choose up to 50 species of plants when they are uh, free ranged, like this horse, eating um, um, uh, a leaf of this plant, which I don't know what type of plant is this, and why uh, the, the horse is eating that when he or she has more grass there, but it's the way they, they, they live. And that reminds us that the horses need, or the equids need more than an ingredient, <laughs> more than a thing. We will see. <laughs> and also, and another obvious thing that they are hindgut fermenters. Uh -huh. And this, this ability to ferment after uh, the, the, the stomach uh -huh, or the, or the uh, small intestine, they, it give, gave it them uh, uh, an ability to extract more nutrients from the fiber. And then they were more like um, effective than the other species they had competition with while during their evolution. Yeah, the cows decided, I, I, I would like to use these this, this words like they decided, like if they were, they, they had the ability to decide, they have it surely, but let me use the term. Cows during evolution decided to ferment before the stomach, before the, 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 the small intestine. However, they lost the opportunity to, to, utilize, to, to use uh, some sugars and some amino acids, amino acids which are very important for the horse to perform as an athlete. Uh -huh. The horse decided to, uh, and the cow was one of those herbivores who decided to, 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 to have a longer retention time instead of chewing while eating. When we say chewing, we, say, we call about uh, chewing the mastication before swallowing the first time. The cows, we know they ruminate, but uh, we, when we are talking about the moment of eating uh, and, and the first, the first uh, uh, swallowing they have, we, the horses, we know that they don't ruminate. And, but then since they ferment after the, the, the small intestine, they have, uh, they can use the sugars and the amino acids as, and, the, and, the, and some essential fatty acids as they are in the plants. Will cows transform, well, the microbes of the cows transform these nutrients in the, in the rumen. Well, um, and what's the, the good thing of this, that the horse is, is an athlete. Can I go on your phone? Then, 
Um, well, this is a very important thing because 70%, although the horse has this advantage, 70% of its energy requirements are covered by the uh, uh, hindgut fermentation. And it's very important, this, this section of the gastrointestinal tract for the uh, working animals, because the working animals walk and walk and walk for hours a day. Then how much um, does an equid eat? Uh -huh, because that's normally what uh, a question we, we, we make, oh, okay, or oh, an owner makes, how much does an equid eat? Well, uh, in some uh, papers they present that the variation for maintenance and up to a lactat lactating mare, it's 100 grams to 170 grams of dry matter of forage per um, kilogram of uh, body weight, uh, in this case, um, um, scaled to 0 0.75, which is what we call as metabolic weight. This metabolic weight will be treated later, and, and uh, it, it let us um, it let us work uh, between species and between sizes of animals. Another more uh, simple and, and, and um, colloquial way to predict uh, or to calculate how much an equid eats is that uh, figure of 1.5 to 3 percent of its body weight. However, if this horse is 400 kilos, then that means um, something like six to 12 uh, kilograms of dry matter of this forage. And six to 12, it's, it's a big difference. Uh -huh. uh, uh, if, if we are talking about a bale, a normal bale of hay in Mexico is something like 18 kilos then we would be talking about a third or two thirds of the bale for, for to, to sustain this horse. It's, it's a different, it's a difference. And then we need to be more precise and understand. But why this difference is reported? Because this is a, what we call a Creole horse in Mexico. And is what we, this type of easy keeper animals, he could have enough with 1.5, but for example, uh, uh, an Arabian horse in Mexico, an Arab horse in Mexico, with a higher rate, uh, we, uh, it could have a, a, a voluntary feeding take of 2.5. And I remember when I was in Egypt, I saw, uh, well, for me, a beautiful black horse uh, <laughs> a type, an, a, 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 an Arab type horse pulling a cart. Uh, working, and I say, well, uh, I just talk with the with one of one of the vets there, and I say, you know that horse, which is an Arab horse, obviously, which is is pulling a cart in Egypt, would be a a very expensive saddle horse in Mexico. Uh -huh. Then, and and also I had the opportunity to one to to meet a couple of. Uh, a couple from England who came to Mexico and saw, they saw a, a very beautiful Creole horse, Mexican horse, and they told me, how much about is that horse? And I said, well, probably something like 12,000 pesos. And they say, they said, well, that, that horse would be 12,000 pounds <laughs> in, in, in England. Then uh, it's, it's about that some areas where we are work, using animals to work, these animals could be saddle uh, 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 horses in other areas. Uh, but it's just to remind, or to, to, to keep in mind that uh, the, the type of horse changes and the type of horse uh, from an evolutionary point of view uh, uh, tell us the, their um, metabolic rate and a horse with a higher metabolic rate like an Arab will eat more than a horse with a lower metabolic rate like, like this Creole horse. And it is easier to keep a, a draft horse, a Creole, Mexican Creole horse, than to keep a, 
an, an Arab horse in, in, in Egypt uh, from well, from my contact point of view and from what I have seen. And, and it's a way I explain this rate of this difference in, in, in voluntary feed intake. And now, okay, we decide how much to provide to the horse. We say, okay, this horse is an Arab horse and et cetera, et cetera. And I am, ah, because also an Arab horse could be eating 2%, not 2.5%. 2.5 percent because it's having a better quality forage uh -huh. and this horse this this mexican horse could be uh, eating more or less also depending on the on the quality of of the forage that's very important then when we offer the diet to a to a equid to a working equid we have to think how how long will it take to eat that quantity of food and that depends on many aspects one of them how um, i would say how tired the horse is after the journey did the horse work two hours did the horse work eight hours or did the horse walked 15 hours huh? how how tired the horse is after the journey how happy <laughs> or keen is to eat in terms of chewing the quantity of food we are providing it and also how good is the quality of this food in terms of of fibrousness uh, the, uh, the quality of the fiber how rough is the forage is it a forage or is it a roughage uh -huh. then the animal will be able to eat the 10 kilos he needs to eat to 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 um, repair its uh, nutrient um, preserves in the body, because this is what the animal does. What the animal does is to repair the reserves he or she used during the journey, uh -huh. because during the journey was not eating. Normally they don't eat during the journey, they are not uh, fed during the journey. And, and anyway, they are using what they have in their body. And when they eat, is to repair those reserves, then are we providing the time and the quality of food for the horse or donkey to be able to repair, to extract the nutrients, to repair its, its body reserves? That's one, that's something we have to, to analyze. And that's something we have to, to take into account to, to advise the people to give just forage or forage and some concentrates, etc. And also, uh, when when talking about concentrates or grains, we have to take into account whether or not the people has, has access to this. Uh -huh. uh, just a, a very important question, Joao. ¿Cuánto tiempo tengo? Uh, son tienes 15 minutos, Mariano, y después empezamos okay. el debate. Okay, okay, perfect. Then, then now the requirements, uh -huh. and I will be a little bit uh, uh, simple, <laughs> because what I want to, to do, my most important thing in this is to, 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 to raise, uh, to make you raise questions, you know? because we will see some equations you can find in the, in the books. I am telling you my experience and my uh, assumptions then then uh, some questions raised and um, which are the requirements of, of, of the equids yeah as any equid not just the working equid uh -huh. energy and energy is is why they do why they do need energy well to function to move and to endure uh, there are some I ate some letters, sorry, the words. Then uh, this is a horse pulling a cart in the, to collect rubbish in some of the forsaken areas in, this, in some cities of Mexico. And they, these horses just walk and sometimes they trot and they pull a cart with probably a ton of garbage or, uh, or rubbish. Uh -huh. Then, um, and they walk like eight hours a day. They need energy to move, but also to endure. Uh -huh. 
they need sugars. Why? Because uh, some specific tissues uh, need sugars. Uh -huh. um, there used to be an abuse of sugars in general in the nutrition of horses. Now pet people is very focused in not avoiding but in reducing the, the, the concentration of sugars in the diet of the horse. However, they still need some sugars for specific tissues like the eye, like the nervous system, etc. Uh, and also these sugars are important for the, uh, the body reserves. Uh -huh. This is a lady who normally walked 15, 15 kilometers, 7.5 going and 7.5 going back home, just to bring the forage for her donkeys and her goats. Uh -huh. Then uh, they need fiber. Why? Because the fiber provides also energy for a long term and, and the intestinal health. If they don't eat uh, fiber, they, they don't chew enough and they don't have uh, uh, energy for to perform. Uh, they need fat and what the fat provides is energy also for longer. However, uh, probably because it's interesting in Mexico, it also has um, reached the working animal world uh -huh, that uh, because the sport equity world is full of people giving oil to the horses. The horse is very thin and they give the horse with oil to, 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 to get it uh, fat. Or well, not fat, but, but uh, to recover, to put weight on. Uh -huh. And now some people in the working equity uh, world is thinking that they have to provide fat to the animals in, 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 form of, in the form of oils to, to put weight on. However, no, it's, fat is important, but the fat just in the, in the forage or if, if there is grain in the diet, the, 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 the grain. Protein is very important because it's, it's important to growth and, and to keep the structure. Uh -huh. and, and this is very important because remember, if the horse is obtaining the protein, the amino acids from the protein of the diet, it has to be a good quality protein that is digested in the, in the uh, uh, small intestine. And here, for example, some issues raise when, when I discuss with, with people about how to feed working equids, they say, okay, yes, yeah, you are good protein quality, uh, good quality protein is available just in commercial um, concentrates. And people, uh, uh, we normally regard uh, these working equity owners as poor people, and they say poor people will not be able to buy a concentrate. And I say, well, from that poor people, have you say, I have learned that giving uh, uh, feeding horses, donkeys, or mules with, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, chickpeas and uh, how do you say in English? Abbas, you all? Fava beans? I think so, yeah. Yeah, fava beans. Uh, they, are, they don't know they are increasing the protein concentration in the diet, but they, they have seen that in a month the animal goes from two body condition score to three body condition score. And that is just because they increase the protein level without having to, to buy a, a very expensive commercial concentrate. Just from, from their resources, in some areas of Mexico, they, have, they produce chickpeas, and then from those chickpeas, they, 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 they have uh, noticed that by giving, by giving, feeding the animal with chickpeas for a month, the, the animal recovers its body condition in terms of muscle, and then they move again to forage. Well, obviously they were giving some forage, but to just forage or forage with some maize grain. And in some other areas, in the mountains of Mexico, where they produce fava beans, they use the fava beans during the working season because they have noticed that with the fava beans, the animal uh, le uh, loses less muscle. And yes, because when an animal is working or horse is make you doing exercise or a mule or a monkey uh, is is using protein to is is having an impact on its muscles 
and we have to recover those muscles, how? By increasing the protein quality of the diet, then there are many, many, many ways to do it. And I have solved what I have, uh, what I have to tell about amino acids when I talk about protein, but it's for a specific tissues. When, how, look, this nice horse pulling a cart uh, in, in a rubbish dumps, uh -huh. uh, and what, what type of specific tissues, muscle, it's listening to, 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 to be, well, to, to, to keep its characteristics. And minerals, uh -huh. As, uh, one day I read a, a book, uh, uh, and in a book I read a paragraph saying, it is very easy to keep a horse well nourished. It's, you, it takes just uh, uh, forage at libitum, some grain, and some salt. <laughs> And then it, uh, that, that's, that's enough. But minerals are important for the structure of bones, for example, balance, uh, water balance, and how the water uh, uh, circulates in the body and function. An egg with, uh, which loses lots of minerals through sweat and these minerals are not provided in the food uh, will, will have problems. Uh -huh. And how about the, 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 the different uh, um, the ways to, to estimate the, the, the requirements? Well, we start by talking about maintenance and how, how we keep the body condition of the equids. And I, will, I would like to, 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 to say in this case that body condition is important, not only, not only in terms of, of score, but also in ter terms of quality, because we need a horse in good condition, but, or an equity in good condition, but fleshy, not fatty, uh -huh, because they need to thermoregulate, as we said. Uh -huh. And there are different points in the body that we take into account to know if the animal is fat. Look, this donkey couldn't be regarded as fat or obese, because if we pay attention of, of the shoulders, uh, he, we could say, well, he's not so fat. However, all this is fat. Uh -huh. And then uh, is, he tells us that he is not in good condi body condition. Yeah. And well, he could be a little bit fat, but he is on the snow and he is dissipating heat by, by being in, the cold, in a cooler situation. And then I, I'm not going to tell you how to use a body condition score, but it's going from one to five just to say the horse is skinny, thin, good, fat. Or obese, and and what we want is is this a uh, medium point. And about donkeys, it's the same. We have skinny donkeys, thin donkeys, and, and so th those in good conditions or obese. And we don't want none of the of of, of those uh, two score. A score of two is acceptable, and probably a three point five if if we like to put. Uh, uh, points in, in the middle, but um, it's very easy to know what an animal in good condition is. And also to, to feed them, we need to, to understand about their body weight, because the body weight deter uh, well, determines the quantity of, of food he is able to eat, but also the, the, the requirement of energy to maintain, for maintenance. No? And there are many ways, because of time, I'm, I'm going I'm not going to stop a lot because you 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 surely know ways to to estimate the weight of the equids. If you don't have a balance, you can have some uh, um, you can you can use some equations to get the uh, the body weight of horses based on the uh, heart girth or the body length and the height. Uh -huh. And there are very good uh, equations to do this and to, to be more uh, precise. And in the donkeys, there is also there are also some equations based on, on on the length of the body, not from the shoulder but from the elbow, to uh, and then and then the heart uh, um, girth and the uh, height from the withers to the to the floor. Uh -huh. um, I'm not. Me uh, quedan como cinco minutos, Joao. Yep, go for it, Mariana. Okay. And uh, then I, I would also just talk about this uh, 
uh, about energy in equids. Uh -huh. All the, the food, all the ingredients have the more or less similar gross energy content, but what makes the difference is how, how, when, how these, um, these uh, feedstuffs or ingredients are digested by the equid and how the nutrients are extracted to obtain energy or protein or minerals or whatever you have in mind. But as I told you, the most important thing in equids and even more in working equids is energy. And is we have to think about the energy lost in feces and it depends on the, on the quality of the food in terms of fiber. Also, how much energy is lost in urine or gases uh -huh. and, and also uh, how, how much energy is, is lost as heat uh -huh. and the most uh, reliable way to, to, to guess to obtain or to talk about the equid um, um, uh, requirements is digestible energy. There are systems which uh, rely on net energy however to understand or to have to rely on net energy, for example, and especially in working equids, we would have to know, okay, the net energy for of, of this forage in this horse, and the horse could be an Arab or could be a Creole or could be a donkey or could be a Belgian horse or could be, I don't know, a Percheral, then uh, it changes because of the horse. It changes because of the, if, uh, of the environment of the weather, is it hot today? Is it hot and humid? Is, is the food uh, uh, grass hay or alfalfa hay? And then uh, it would change a lot and it, it wouldn't give us uh, uh, sound, uh, a sound basis. Yeah, the digestible energy, is, it's important having in mind what it's causing a heat increment and contributing to the animal's total heat production why work okay these are the equations to to estimate from different systems this is the american system this is the french system the german system and how we have to take some difference into account when we work with ponies and donkeys uh -huh. and and also when we work with the size of the of the animal the equity. yes uh, and just i just explained this this is a belgian horse a draft horse uh, and this is a, a pony well which is a mini horse which is not used for work but it's just to understand because he's these animals were in our hospital in the university in mexico and and that is why i have photos and they are very similar and very they help us to understand the difference between a big horse and a small horse uh, when he he his weight is 10 percent of its weight however if we if we Think about how much dry matter, in terms of um, um, how much dry matter this animal eats in terms of its body weight. He eats more grams, more 24 grams. Uh, he eats more grams per kilogram of body weight than this big animal. He just eats 16. But in terms of taking into account the metabolic weight, they are eating the same. Uh -huh. Then, um, in terms of total dry matter intake, intake, he would be eating more, but in terms of energy, they are eating more or less the same. Yeah, and the same with donkeys. And, uh, with donkeys, uh, the donkeys normally, even if it is a, a donkey, the same the same weight of a donkey of a pony, uh, the donkey eats in, as as a smaller the donkey is less what it eats, but as bigger the donkey is more than, than it eats compared to a pony. Yeah. And crude protein, just to finish, uh, is, is as long as we keep the energy requirements and we meet the energy requirements, we, we have to, to take into account that the crude protein should be in the diet as at least as 40 grams of crude protein per a mega calorie of uh, energy, digestible energy in the diet, but all uh, as long as well, provided that crude protein is 50% digestible, 
then the whole the equity is able to use it and to cover to meet uh, the protein and amino acid uh, requirements. Um, I will finish with this uh -huh, the, the work type uh, how how much these uh, uh, um, requirements increase depending on work we have to, to, to think about type main activity how long the work uh, is sustained how often the animal works and thinking that every nutrient is critical but even more the selection of the food yes the, um, uh, unfortunately even in even in in the sport horses it's very uh, not difficult but it's not very precise to say the level of work of the animal there are some data that let us uh, estimate how heavy the work is based on if it is an animal walking then we think uh, uh, 0.5 kilocalories of digestible energy per hour per kilogram then is 300 kilos times eight hours times 0.5 to know the increment uh, by uh, walking eight hours of this animal then we, we have this to more or less estimate and take the things to to this what is uh, uh, the advice that light moderate heavy intense and increasing the requirement in terms of the percentage of maintenance but we we need to know very well the, the level of work, the type of work, and, the, and how long and how heavy that work is. Well, um, and the, and so, and donkeys is not. We we know more now about donkey nutrition, but in terms of of how 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 much the the requirements increase in a donkey working lightly or heavily, we are not still very sure. However, we have, well, in my experience, I have done calculations based on what happens with horses and, uh, well, uh, at least uh, something to, to um, well, to, to help them and to have better uh, uh, assumptions, or more precise assumptions with them. Well, um, I think uh, I, I will, um, let the talk here and and open to uh, well i'm happy to answer any question mm -hmm. thank you mariani thank you so much i'll probably ask you to to stop sharing uh your screen and i'll probably ask all the participants if you if you feel to to, to connect your camera and we can we can have a, a debate here uh, first of all, Mariana, thank you so much. I think nutrition is something really important and I, I do have a few comments and a few questions here to, to ask you. But before I move with mine, I will ask if someone in the room, there are a few comments here, but I'd like, if someone has a question to Mariana, please just turn on your camera and unmute your microphone and please do it. Well, well, to break the ice, I'll read uh, Sesk uh, message. He said, I've read that the two horses are animals that in wild graze quite often. It is important to provide them several meals during the day, that it's better less quantity often than a lot just a couple of times a day. Is this right? Um, it's in the, um, okay, in the, I've read in the that. chat. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is very, uh, as long as the horses can eat more during the day is is better for them in terms of gastrointestinal health and in terms of behavior and in terms of nutrition yeah um, um, if you if you feed them twice a day uh, well it's because you are you have decided to divide the total quantity of dry matter um, in, in two times a day however you have to to let the animal have the time to eat uh, the, the whole uh, yeah, the, the, the whole quantity of food you provided for example if you give five kilos of hay 
in average, an animal it takes to a horse or to a donkey an hour to beat one kilo of hay. Then it doesn't matter if you do it twice a day. However, uh, um, uh, you just make sure that he will have 10 hours a day to eat those 10 kilos of forage. You can provide five times a day, then you have to be, and you can say, okay, two kilos every time I, I, I provide the food, but you will have to, to ensure two hours to be eaten because it's the, it's the time it takes to chew that quantity of forage. Then uh, it's, it's uh, yes, it is normally said, provide food more often, uh, but it has to do with the, the nature of the equid, because the, the equid in, in free range equid is eating 16 hours a day. But that part, that budget of eating is divided not only in eating, but also in, in foraging, uh -huh. in, 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 in looking for the food he is deciding or she is deciding to eat. And also in harvesting, we have seen some, uh, uh, we have done some uh, assays of how long a horse or, uh, takes uh, uh, in, in, in a time to, 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 to look for the food, to harvest the food and to eat the food, to chew the food. And it's more or less 10% of the time is looking for the food and, and more or less uh, from that 90% of time we have, uh, a third of that time is harvesting the food and then the two other thirds is it's eating and chewing and swallowing. Then when the, the equid is in a stable, he doesn't have to look for the food, he doesn't have to harvest the food, he just have to um, eat the food. And there are studies which confirm the time it takes for an, an equid to eat a kilo of different things, for example, pellets of concentrate, it takes just, uh, there are some studies which have reported 10 minutes per kilo of, of, of uh, pellets, then uh, that is, if you provide 10 kilos of pellets, the horse will finish it in less than two hours and, and he will have to do, he will have nothing to do the rest of the time and will develop some behavioral problems. Just to give an example. That, that's very true, Mariano, what you just, what you just said in terms of uh, the vices and the behavioral problems due to the modern ways of feeding animals inside four walls. That in most of yeah. the places, animals not having access to the, to the outside creates. Is there any other question in the, in the room? Well, I do have a question, Mariano. Uh, of course, from a practical point of view, it is really interesting what you said about the percentage of forage compared with body weight, right? And I pretty much use the half term when I, when I need to talk with someone and advice about uh, the amount of food. I always mention that needs to be a good quality forage and I give around 2% of the body weight. But then there's always the typical question that is, what about concentrate? And I always tend to say that should be between 0 0.3 and 0 0.5 of the body weight, uh, uh -huh. depending on the type of the work the animal does. If the animal is actually not working, they should, if the, the forage is good, they should not give any forage. If the animal is working, they can increase the energy available by giving this concentrate. First, is this correct what I'm saying? And second, is the percentage of 0 0.3 to 0 0.5% of the body weight correct? Yes, it's, um, there are many ways to estimate how much um, concentrate is advised to, to, to provide to an animal. Um, that that uh, 0.3 to 0.5 um, um, approximation you do, it's, it's good. In some other cases, for example, if when the animal is not working, is 100% of the total uh, uh, dry matter to be offered has to be forage. Mm -hmm. If it is in light work and you have access to concentrates, it's 10% of concentrate uh, and 90% forage. And as uh, if it is moderate, 20% of concentrate, 80% of forage. If it is uh, heavy, 30% of concentrate, 
70% of forage. And if it is intense work, is 40% of concentrate and 60% uh, of forage. Uh, the, the good thing of, uh, I would say, the, the good thing of concentrates is that as I, it's not only, it's not just because I like dentistry too, <laughs> but it's, it has to do with, with the, recently it has been um, noticed how important is the, is the mastication, the budget of the day for the horse to masticate. Yes, and then if the horse or the equity is it's so tired after a journey, of eight hours uh, with no food probably, and just uh, probably just water, then the horse will be tired at night and or at uh, afternoon or evening. And if, if he receives more uh, concentrate, which is easier to eat, and it takes less uh, mastication movements, then uh, you are, it is, the benefit is not only because there is a, a good quantity of energy in that concentrate. That is why we say concentrate, but also because it is easier to be eaten. Uh -huh. And then the rest of the food uh, as forage will uh, provide the, 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 that quantity of food the horse needs to chew to avoid uh, bad behavioral problems, but also to meet the requirements. Uh, yeah. The, the, yeah, the nutritional requirements of the animal. Then um, I move normally in this type of way. I say, okay, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% of, of, uh, of the total dry matter intake as, as concentrate if the animal uh, needs to eat concentrate. But as you increase the quality of, of the forage, uh, well, you rely less on Concentrates. Yep, thanks. T Tamara just raised her hand. Hello, Tamara. Is there a question, a comment? Oh, hola. Hola, Mariano. Hola, Tamara. I have a, a question. Uh, uh -huh. What about water intake during working day? Because sometimes it's difficult to convince owners to provide water during the day. Yeah. Yes, I, what I say is that uh, <laughs> um, it's as many times as possible <laughs> to offer water to an equity because in Mexico, and I am noticing that in Chile it's the same, and let's know what happens in Europe, it would be interesting. In Mexico, people think that if they give water to a horse or donkey during the journey, uh, the horse or the donkey will have something like stomach ache. We, we, in humans, in Mexico, we have a condition we call dolor de caballo, something like horses pain uh, in, in my stomach if I drink water and keep running or doing exercise. Then people extrapolate from what happens to people that they think that it will happen the same with equids, then they do not give uh, water during the day. In some field conditions, I have told the people, okay, let your horse, your donkey, your mule to drink water in the river. If you are crossing a river, just stop and let, let him uh, drink. And they say, no, because it's working. Then <laughs> during eight hours, they drink nothing. I, my, my advice is, is uh, let the, the horse drink uh, as many times as possible a day. There is a, an old saying, a cowboy's saying, is, you can take your horse to the water, but you, you will not make it drink. Have you heard it? Then I just, I just interpret that saying in other way. I just say, if your horse doesn't, or your donkey doesn't want water, it's not going to drink, but just offer water during the, the, um, during the journey. Because the reserve of water, in, we don't know in a donkey yet, but in a horse, is for, is in, a, in an average horse, is something like 30 to 40 liters of water in the, in the uh, large, in, uh, large intestine. Uh -huh. Then um, a horse producing sweat and dripping sweat 
is, is losing 10 liters of water per hour, then that means that in four hours, we'll have no reserve of water in the column. Then uh, that is why I say, as agua should be, I mean, obviously not while walking, but uh, every two hours, stop and offer water to your equine. Huh? That's that's yeah, really yeah. important, uh, Mariana. Thanks, for, Tamara. Thanks for the question, Mariana. Thanks for the answer. And going back to the chat, Sest just wrote a very interesting comment that links uh, the, the situation you were just saying now, Mariana. Somehow links with impaction colics, and and Sesk is now linking that with with uh, laminitis. He said food seems to have a close relation with laminitis, special sugar-rich one. So we prefer to feed just good hay. How about tankies? Uh, how about donkeys? Can they eat the same kind of hay? And I think the reason why Sask is asking this is because he's going to be the proud owner of a donkey in less than 15 days. So he's moving to, he's moving to the dark side, going from horses to donkeys. So I think that's why he's... That, that's <laughs> right. I want to be a good father. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, yes. The, the, the donkeys are more sensible to laminitis than horses. And why? Because the donkeys get fatter than horses with, uh, with the same quality of, of, of forage, I would say. For example, a donkey, a don with a bad quality forage, the donkey does better than the horse, okay? I mean, the, the donkey keeps well. With a higher quality forage, the horse will keep well and the donkey will get fat. Uh -huh. And then it is taken also to the risk of metabolic syndrome and then developing uh, 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 laminitis. This talking about the laminitis from the metabolic uh, origin. Uh -huh. The other type, or well, the other origin, I would say, of laminitis is the, because of endotoxins. And those have to do with the abrupt, uh -huh, sudden changes in the in the in the in the feeding practices, which take to uh, a disruption of the equilibrium of the microbiome of the equid in the hindgut. Yeah, then every change in the in the every uh, every sudden change in the diet will take the animal to laminitis because or by affecting the microbes in the hindwood. And every abuse of sugars or, or yes, uh, uh, wood quality forages, I would say, or, or, or very concentrated foods will take the animal to a metabolic condition which will lead to laminitis. Then it's the same in, in donkeys, and I would say donkeys are more sensible. Um, for example, in the rubbish dumps in Mexico, we used to see more donkeys with laminitis than horses. Why? Because the animals, the animals, no, sorry, the people um, fed the animal, the donkey, like a small horse. And they, they, they noticed that a horse owner, or for, for example, the, the person who, who, sell, who sold the food have like bags of, of concentrate and, and he put some uh, commercial concept, two kilos of commercial concentrate, two kilos of maize grain, and two kilos of bran, and it was it was mixed and sold as a, as the perfect diet for a horse or a donkey. Yeah. Then in the actually in the rubbish dumps in Mexico, we didn't we didn't have problems with skinny donkeys. We had problems with fat donkeys, obese donkeys, and these donkeys were like that because because the diet included lots of, of, um, of sugars, just because the people was extrapolating from horses to donkeys. And then we, we, we used to deal with laminitis problems there. Then I would say this in this way, unfortunately for the donkey, the donkey does better in uh, lower quality forages or lower quality foods then we could use lower, not, not bad quality, lower quality, I, am, I mean, lower quality foods. For example, a donkey does well in a straw. 
Uh -huh. uh, whilst a horse doesn't do very well in a straw for maintenance. A donkey, a working donkey probably would do well in the straw still, but the horse wouldn't. The horse would need a better quality forage or some concentrate because also has to do with that. Okay, I'm sorry, this is the only forage we have in the area. <laughs> you can't talk about alfalfa, you can talk about the barzim, that, that uh, legume used in Egypt. However, we don't have that, we just have uh, straw. Then what else could we use? Then the, let's look for the resource in the area to increase the quality of the diet. Or the other thing is to reduce the, 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 the workload of the animal. But yes, uh, to answer the question, Donkeys are more uh, 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 are like more sensible, more prone to laminitis when there are lots of sugars in the diet. And another thing, just to finish, forages, temperate forages like European forages, are uh, donkeys do obviously very well with them, so well that they get fat. Whilst with tropical grasses, tropical forages, uh, uh, they keep better uh, because the tropical grasses are the, the, uh, the contents of sugar in tropical grasses is, is lower than in temperate grasses. But that's probably something that people don't know, Mariana. That's beside the fact that in the tropics everything is very green, the quality in terms of sugar of the of the the forage and the and the the grass is not that good. Uh, if you you know it's that typical reaction. That, well, it's very green. It's very luxurious. It's going to be a very good forage, and that that's not the case, right? In in the tropics. No, but no. Uh, it, it it depends on what you what you used to think to regard a forage good quality for. Uh, and normally we think in the sugars, but not we we have to think in the the fiber and the protein. Um, for example, um, the, the, in nutrition we call this, uh, the, um, let me think in English, uh, neutral uh, NDF, neutral uh, and detergent fiber. Uh -huh. Neutral deter de detergent fiber is, it, it is, it is uh, uh, a data from the lab, nutrition lab, which tells you how much fiber a forage has. Then, for example, a bad quality tropical forage will have more than 65%. And, and, and it, is, it is known that um, higher than 65% of neutral detergent fiber will, will bring, uh, will, uh, is not good for equids. Not. However, below 45 is not good for equids because the rest, if it has 45 of neutral detergent, I will say now NDF. If it is lower than 45 of NDF, the other, uh, the other 55 is sugars, and sugars yeah. are not good for equids. Because of then, the laminitis you just mentioned, for example. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah and, and, and now many forages. Uh, for example, we we use in Mexico we use now uh, the temperate forages like rye grasses, orchard grasses, etc., are very popular in the dairy the dairy farmers mm -hmm. because it's 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 good sugar for the rumen of the cow and most of yeah. those sugars just pass away, etc. However, and then people think, okay, this is a good quality. Uh, forage for horses or donkeys too. No, because it's lots of sugar for the equid. Yeah. And if you move between 50 and 60 of NDF, it's good for an equid. And you can find tropical grasses with that. It, it depends on the age of the grass. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, that's, uh, I would say that in general yeah. terms. David just made a, a comment. He said, Gracias, Mariano. Gran presentación. More than a question, I'd like to Gracias. comment the enormous difference between local breeds versus imported draft horse breed and horses versus donkeys. And the reason why David is saying this, he lives 
uh, in, a, in a place in the mountains in between the border between Portugal and Spain in a mountain area. He said, I have a local breed mare that escaped to mountain for four months and came back with perfect body condition, perfect hooves and pregnant. The same year bought a Breton, uh, a Breton horse used to alfalfa and hay and lost weight even with lots of grass. He took a full year to get used to the place. And donkeys, Zamorano donkeys are very Mediterranean for my place. They just don't graze. They just eat the bushes. So it's a good example of what you're just saying. Three different types of aquids. And the only one that is actually coping with the conditions is the local breed. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, uh, it's what, what they call the nutritional ecology, no? How the animal fits with the, with the ecosystem to, to meet its, its, its nutritional requirements, but also to keep that like, well, to keep that ecosystem. And then if you bring a horse used to it, another thing where the horse comes from, then you see uh, terrible things. Yeah. yeah, and it's like in Mexico, now they are bringing lots of Frisian horses. And they are bringing Frisian horses for the drug dealers <laughs> in the tropical areas. You know, I mean, these, these Frisian horses from Netherlands, are used cold conditions uh, to temperate grasses, etc., and they are brought brought to warm conditions, very humid, and with tropical grasses. Then uh, they do not do as well as in, in Netherlands. And as and, and as I was telling you, the, these Creole horses in the semi desert semi desertic areas of Mexico keep very well the body condition, like this mare. Uh, that David is talking about because they are in there. You could stand there and you would say, "Hey, and what would the animals? And what are the animals eating here? I I can't see so many plants here to be well." But, but this horse does very well when it's free ranched, yeah. and it's the way that people do it. As I told you about the donkeys in another area, they bring the donkeys two weeks, and the donkey loses body condition, and then the donkeys is put back in the free range for three months and when they get the donkey again the donkey is <laughs> is in good body condition to work again yeah, yeah. so mariano we have a last a last question from sask here saying how long takes the food to go through a horse digestive system since eaten to poop out is the same is it the same for donkeys uh, thank you good question um well the section of the gastrointestinal um, of the gastrointestinal tract where the food is retained longer is the uh, large the large intestine obviously um, yeah, well, obviously because of the fermentation and the difference is between 36 to 72 hours in the stomach is retained just a couple of hours and in the small intestine, there is no retention. It's, it's just a rate of passage, which is more about more or less about 1.5 hours. Then, uh, yes, uh, and it changes if it is water or if it is, uh, um, well, if it is liquid or if it is uh, fiber or solid. Yes, because uh, for example, now we have here Elena, my partner, is also in the in the meeting, and she would say, "Hey, that's not true because when I give a horse mineral oil uh, uh, with colic in less than I want it to to be out in less than 40, 24 hours." Well, yes, with liquids changes, but with solids is what we have in mind is more or less thirty six hours, up to seventy two, and when is longer when it's a less quality forage uh, and then the animal was slower to eat it and remember they decided during the day revolution they decided to to chew better to retain shorter then if you provide the animal with something difficult to eat they will have to retain longer and then uh, that will bring the nutritional and health problems that we have and donkeys are naturally more adapted to retain longer 
because they 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 in, in natural in the natural conditions the evolution took place the food was less available and more fibrous then they had to they ate less often i would say they had to chew more and Joao can tell us about the anisognatism in the donkeys that difference of of uh, they have uh, how would you say narrower the yeah, lower teeth the, the mandible yeah and because they have to chew like um, uh, more to extend the chewing to to grind better the food and the donkeys have that uh, that that particular um, characteristic of retaining longer the food okay mariano thank you ever so much for for the time you spent with us this evening for us this afternoon for you it was a great pleasure to have you here with you uh, to all the participants uh, that attended this webinar thank you so much for for being with with us uh, when we will when we will record this um, well sorry when we will edit this document Mariano if you don't mind we'll just put your professional address so people ah. have any any yeah, email, I was or if you just wanted to write it on the chat now so people can have it so if there is any question about nutrition if you or, don't mind I was I was about showing my okay. uh, email last slide yeah uh -huh. I, I tried to put it, but uh, there we go. Table. this is okay. That's my email address, and, and well, um, I am very happy to keep in contact. And, and thank you, you all, and for the invitation, and all of you uh, for having been here. Thanks, Mariano. It was a, it was a pleasure to I have you. My my English was clear. It was. It was very clear, <laughs> and all the all the nutrition, all the message around nutrition was very very clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> okay, you all have a good evening. People is just saying thanks in the chat. Emily saying thank you, Paul as well, Sask as well. Thank you all for joining us. It was a pleasure to have you. <laughs>